guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Today we're reviewing the E-Flight Carbon Z 2.1 meter Cessna 150. We're talking an 83 inch wingspan here, so this is a really nice size model. Now, if you've never seen the movie Iron Eagle, there's a sequence where the lead character, Doug Masters, flies a Cessna 150 through this race that they call the Snake, where he races some guy on a motorcycle through a canyon. Totally hokey scenario, and it results in kind of a crash landing due to the guy, of course, sabotaging Doug's airplane. That being said, I think Doug probably would have had a better chance if he wasn't racing with his flaps down. You know, the whole flying sequence is a display of some pretty incredible aerobatic flying by Art Scholl, who was just this amazing aerobatic pilot back in the day. He flew for a number of movies throughout his career, but unfortunately, uh, he died in a crash while filming that spin scene for the movie Top Gun. So when I saw this E-Flight Cessna, it really took me back to when I watched Iron Eagle over and over as a kid. Seriously, over and over. So there might be a repaint in this airplane's future, uh, but you know, first things first, let's take this airplane out of the box, get this thing together, let you know how it is and how it flies. The box is huge and the airplane is big and it's awesome. So, let's go. Opening the box, the airplane is nicely packaged. I didn't find any damage at all through shipping. You know, E-Flight has broken the airplane down into a small number of large components. You have the fuselage, the wings and horizontal stabilizers, then the rudder, then the landing gear and all the necessary hardware and carbon spars uh, and wing struts. The assembly is overall quite simple having you start with the landing gear. The mains simply bolt into place easily enough. The nose gear comes in a pre-assembled box uh, that simply slides into place and is held in the fuselage by two screws. It was suggested by a fellow Cessna owner to go through and Loctite all of the screws in the nose gear assembly, which I did and I recommend to you guys also. Uh, the gear is all shock absorbing, which is nice, but the stock tires are, are quite hard. So I ended up, after flying the airplane, replacing them with some Robart tires. From there, the motor is installed. Uh, along with the front cowl and then the prop. For safety, I recommend holding off installing the prop or at least connecting the motor until you have all final checks done with the airplane. From there, the rudder is glued in place. You don't need foam safe CA here, just use regular thin CA. Uh, one thing to note was that uh, the tail light in the rudder, the wires for those were too short. So I had to splice uh, in some extra length wire there. Definitely test fit everything before you glue it on. Uh, with the rudder then glued on, the stabs are then fastened to the airplane. And then to finish it all up, the wing struts are attached to the wings, and the wings are placed on the airplane. The cool thing with the wing struts is that they remain attached to the wings and rotate around a pivot, which makes storage of the wings easier. I want to point out, too, that the wings have a nice uh, integrated connector set up at the wing root, so you don't have any loose wires or anything like that. So then, once it's all together, it's just a matter of getting the radio set up. You know, you really get a sense of the size of the airplane sitting on the bench with it all together. It's big and it looks great. E-Flight has done a great job on the shape and the color scheme is nice and bright, which really makes it stand out, especially in the air. Uh, for the size of the airplane, it's very light at only about th seven and three quarter pounds without a battery. Uh, the whole point of this airplane is to have a great sport flyer and E-Flight has really succeeded with creating that. One thing I wanted to mention is that when you're working on the airplane, uh, with it powered on, or any airplane for that matter, I highly recommend removing the prop for safety. 
The airplane is big and a little awkward to maneuver around when it's all together on the bench. So you don't want to end up in urgent care like this guy. I got a little careless uh, and had the airplane all together and powered on on my bench and was moving it around and the throttle accidentally got bumped and the prop, it bit me. Uh, thankfully, it only took three stitches in my left hand, uh, so it wasn't too bad. You know, kill switches are good, but they're not always 100%. Uh, so, you know, better to be safe than sorry. Just spend the two minutes, remove the prop, and you won't have any problems at all. Now we know! And knowing is half the battle. The RC Geek! In setting up the radio for the airplane, uh, this is the bind and fly version which features Horizon Hobby's safe select technology. And not only is this Cessna a fun and fully aerobatic model, it's a great airplane to learn on. And so the safe select is a nice feature to have. In binding the airplane, there are two distinct procedures whether you want safe select available or not. If you have no intention on using safe, then simply bind the airplane to your radio normally. However, if you want safe select on, then you start the procedure normally, but prior to selecting bind on the transmitter, uh, you remove the bind plug from the receiver. If you plan to use Safe Select, I highly recommend assigning it to a switch so that you can turn it on and off as desired. Uh, I have a discussion on using Safe Select in the works, uh, so be on the lookout for that in the future. It's taken me a lot longer than I'd hoped to get that video going, uh, but my recommendation if you're using Safe Select is to use it to supplement your flight training and try to avoid relying on it. You know, flying RC is all about muscle memory and small inputs and Safe Select can mask the feel of the airplane uh, a bit since it roll and pitch limits the airplane when it's active. Okay, so for the control surface setup, I always recommend setting up multiple rates which allows you options during a maiden. Ultimately, through flying the airplane, I found that you know the servos all set to 100% servo travel with some exponential worked well. The max travel results in the following. Uh, for elevator, one and an eighth inch, up and down with 15% expo. For aileron, one and a quarter inch each way with 10% expo. Uh, I did have a lower rate on this as well, which I will tend to go back and forth on, uh, but this is a good place to start. Uh, for rudder, one and one eighth inch with 15% expo, just simply to desensitize the steering. And then for flaps, a one and three eighths inch mid with about a 12% down elevator mix uh, and then two and a half inches uh, for full flaps with about a 35% down elevator mix. Uh, the elevator mixes equate to about three sixteenths inch for mid and a half inch for uh, full flaps. Now the CG location recommended in the manual is 95 to 105 millimeters as measured from the wing root leading edge I'm using a Roaring Top 5800 milliamp hour pack in the nose, six cells. Uh, they're excellent batteries if you've never given them a try. They put out great power and are lightweight. Uh, with that battery, the CG is falling in at about 100 millimeters and the airplane flies perfect at that location. Uh, I fly the airplane mostly full throttle as this gives good penetration uh, for aerobatics and I have my timer set at about five and a half minutes. This gives me about 3.8 volts per cell at landing, so we're not stressing the batteries at all, uh, and there's lots of capacity left if needed. All right, now let's talk flying. This Cessna is an absolute blast to fly. The airplane, it's not necessarily fast, but it's got great power and vertical performance. So what you get is an airplane that will handle any scale aerobatics you want to throw at it, including snap rolls, spins, point rolls, and the like. It'll even hover if you coax it right, and landings and slow flight are a breeze, especially with the flaps down. I really enjoy shooting touch and goes uh, and to see just how slow and softly I can land the airplane. In the air, it looks awesome, especially with that color scheme that they've provided. It's very forgiving and has a huge speed range, which makes it just ideal for learning, too. Uh, if I had one complaint, which really isn't a complaint, uh, but it would be those hard plastic tires that come with the airplane make a huge racket when rolling on the ground. It's kind of comedic, they're so loud. To re remedy that, I just replaced all of the tires with Robart tires 
Uh, this also gives some additional shock absorption uh, for the landing since the tires are significantly softer than what you get in the box. If you want to do the same swap, I used three and three quarter inch tires for the mains uh, and a three and a quarter inch tire for the nose. All right guys, so here's a short flight video of the airplane in action. If you'd like to see the full uncut video, uh, you can see that by clicking on the icon in the upper right corner and you'll find a link to that. Uh, check it out and then we'll wrap this up. Oh, this is a union here. Alright guys, so there we have it, the E-Flight Cessna 150. This is such a fun airplane, I really have been enjoying the heck out of it. It's fun to get back to a high wing airplane like this and enjoy the challenge of scale aerobatics. E-Flight has done a fantastic job on this model and have created a fun and great flying airplane that's suitable for someone learning or even the advanced flyer. Uh, and you know, what you get for the price is an exceptional value. You get a lot of airplane here and it's big. Uh, and it's pretty awesome. I really do think that this airplane will get repainted at some point. I just can't help it. I still dig the movie Iron Eagle. I don't know what it is. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything. So don't forget to check that out. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the field. Ready for the snake? It's. I, I think it is. Better make sure that oil cap is is on tight. That's right, man. Can't can't lose oil pressure. Yeah, everything's at stake on this race. <laughs> <laughs>